Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on lipids. So lipids are used for long-term energy storage. And for those of you that aren't familiar with lipids, lipids is the biological word that we use for fats. So lipids are basically fats, and they're used for long-term energy storage in the body. Um, and they're composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, just like carbohydrates are composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, because those carbs are short-term energy, right? And anything that isn't used up from those, the body's gonna store for later, and that long-term storage is gonna involve the same fundamental elements, which is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Um, ooh, there we go. So uh, lipids do not form polymers, and I said that in the first video. We are gonna go ahead and talk about three main categories of lipids today in this video, um, and you'll see that none of them are just a repeating monomer, monomer, monomer with a covalent bond. Yes, you can form parts of them through de dehydration synthesis. Yes, you can break parts of them down through hydrolysis, but for the most part, uh, they're, not, they're gonna look very different. Uh, and then this is the big important thing. Lipids are nonpolar. Now we have to take a little like little sidetrack here because I don't know how much you remember about polarity of molecules from uh, either ninth grade biology or from chemistry. So let's go ahead and let's talk about polar versus nonpolar. Polar molecules are molecules that have an uneven charge distribution. So what does that even mean? So I'm gonna draw our everybody's favorite molecule. It's just water, right? So here's my water molecule. So the red uh, atom is oxygen, and oxygen, if you look on the periodic table, uh, has a negative charge. Um, so an oxygen ion is uh, O, uh, and it has a, a negative charge, two minus. So it basically, it just carries a negative charge. That's really all you need to know. Whereas the white dots are hydrogen, and if you look on your periodic table, those are gonna have a positive ion charge. So they have a positive dipole. Um, so basically, oxygen really is desperate for electrons and the hydrogen not so much. And so they're going to go ahead and you're going to be distributed unevenly. So the oxygen is going to have a negative charge on that side of the molecule and then the hydrogens have kind of a positive charge, which is opposite, which means that it is polar. It's an uneven charge distribution and that's all it means. Okay, that's like literally it. So you can basically draw any molecule out and you can see, is there this weird uneven charge distribution? And if the answer is no, then it's not polar. That, that's it. Um, so uh, water is polar, but fats are nonpolar, right? Fats are nonpolar. So um, lipids are nonpolar molecules, and that's important because it's gonna kind of determine their biological properties. So the three main categories of lipids. So the first category of lipid is gonna be fatty acids or fats, and the most common place that you find fatty acids in the body is in a molecule called a triglyceride. And you've probably heard about triglycerides when uh, people talk about like their uh, their cholesterol. So let's let's look at triglycerides, okay? So uh, a triglyceride is made up of a glycerol and three fatty acids. So I'm gonna draw that for you. That's my glycerol molecule. And then off each side is gonna be a fatty acid. Um, and I'm gonna draw this super fast. You don't need to draw this. It's in the notes. Um, so each of those is gonna be, each of those chains is a fatty acid. So just a chain of carbon, hydrogen, and a little bit of oxygen. And it's bound through dehydration synthesis to that glycerol, okay? So that is the first uh, category of fats. And it's interesting, we're gonna talk about the fatty acids a little bit uh, because um, these first two that I drew are saturated fats. So if you notice, they're completely straight, right? And there's single bonds between all the carbons. Uh, ignore that the double bonds to the oxygen. We're not talking about the oxygens. Just between the carbons, there's single bonds between all of the carbons. But if you go down and you look at that bottom fatty acid, um, that bottom fatty acid is an unsaturated fatty acid. And it's unsaturated because it has that double bond between the third and the fourth carbon. And so there is the possibility that I could break that double bond and add an extra hydrogen and then it would be saturated with hydrogen. And that's all that that means. 
here's what matters. Unsaturated fatty acids have different properties than saturated fatty acids. And you hear about those in things that you eat, like saturated fatty acids are things like butter and like coconut oil, things that tend to be solid at room temperature and unsaturated fatty acids are things like olive oil, right? Which tend to be more of a liquid. So based on the structure of the fatty acid, the structure of the fat itself, the kind of fluidity and like its its reaction and how it's processed in the body is going to differ. And that's the only reason I'm presenting that to you is just so you understand kind of the difference between saturated and unsaturated fat on the backs of your nutritional labels. So phospholipids are a big deal. Phospholipids are the second category. And um, I this is going to be the only time I ever draw a phospholipid like this. So phospholipids are comprised of a saturated fatty acid and an unsaturated fatty acid, and then they are both bound to a phosphate head. It's not just a phosphate group. There's a little bit more up there, but pretend it's a phosphate head. Now, saturated fatty acids are nonpolar. Unsaturated fatty acids are also nonpolar. But that phosphate group that says PO4 3 minus, that is most definitely charged. So that is polar. Right? So both of my fatty acid tails are nonpolar, but the phosphate head is polar, which means that I have a molecule that has a polar side and a nonpolar side. And that's going to be important in a minute. But just, just stick with me on that. We're going to go over steroids also. Um, so yes. Oh, hey, I labeled it. Yay me. So that part's polar and this part's nonpolar. Um, then the next one we're going to talk about is steroids. So steroids are weirdos. First of all, steroids are fats. Steroids are lipids. Steroids are lipids. Um, and they are weird and they look different than everything else that we're going to talk about in fats and proteins and carbohydrates. They look a little bit like nucleic acids, but not really. And they're made of four fused carbon rings. And so an example of steroids is like cholesterol and sex hormones like testosterone and estrogen. And yes, I just told you that cholesterol was a steroid because cholesterol is a steroid. I mean, it's not like an anabolic steroid that you're going to like eat a bunch of cholesterol and you're going to get swole. I mean, you might get swole, but not like people that take anabolic steroids. Also, anabolic steroids do terrible things to your health. So let's talk about that during class time. So let me draw you a steroid. This is like the most generic steroid that I can draw. So that's the basic steroid structure. And then like it just has random stuff coming off of it. And the random stuff coming off of it determines like is it cholesterol or is it testosterone? That, that's it. But the four basic ring structures, always exactly the same. So if you see four basic ring structures, you should be like, oh, that's a steroid. And that's it for the basics of lipids. So that's it for lipids. Um, I hope those notes make sense to you. If they don't, please go ahead and reach out to me and we'll set up a tutorial time and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.